everybody. My name is Nelson Araujo, and I'm a software engineer at Google. And I'm here with David. Hi, I'm uh, developing modules at Puppet. And we are going to talk about the efforts we've been uh, putting together to make sure that uh, Puppet is a first-class citizen in the Google Cloud. And everything that you can do in the Google Cloud, you should be able to do through Puppet. I, I know it's after lunch. I hope we are not that boring. So I'll try to keep entertaining so you guys don't lose out. Uh, so before we dive into, we have a, a, a live demo of the, this, ho this whole thing running end to end. But I want to take a minute before to talk about what uh, Google is all about today and going to the future. So uh, we are in the midst of this revolution how we do computing. And it started originally with we organizing our resources and making our things run reliable. And now we are moving to the economy at scale. You want to do things faster, we want to do things cheaper, we want to do things in a more flexible way. So the, the customer has become more demanding as time goes by. And uh, as things scale up, the, the cloud, which uh, the, the trend you're going right now, it's where uh, everything is going. So we are changing not to like where you compute, because before you can already run in your data center, you can even, if you are big enough, you can have your own data center. But I also want you to change like how you compute. And uh, that's what we're, we're moving from, from this environment where before I give you tools for you to do the, let's say the, the techniques or like, oh, I can spin a machine or I can uh, store a file or, or I can read quickly to actually allow you to maintain and organize your data, right? So you give you services that you get you to the next level in the sense of I want to now process billions of rows, uh, which a few years ago could not be possible without your team being super specialized in databases and be able to build this huge infrastructure to do so. And as things keep progressing, the second wave, what we're calling second wave, uh, gets more important, right? So uh, before you had uh, your content, you have to go distribute. Now everything can be automatically organized by CDN. Uh, you also now demanding more standards because you don't want to be siloed in a single vendor. So we also are embracing these open standards in a sense that you, you can rest assured that if you don't like what you are having at Google, you can just take your stuff and leave and not be like a uh, hostage to, to our, our, our environment. <laughs> and uh, in terms of, uh, I have to mention also, price and performance are critical things, right? So uh, for first, you have to make sure that your, your system runs. If it doesn't run correctly, it doesn't matter how cheap it is. But after you get it running, you say, okay, now I want to run uh, fast and reliable and hopefully in a, in a good price performance. So, uh, Google introduced a lot of things that help you with that. So in terms of uh, the more you use your machines, your resources, the cheaper they get, they, they get over time. They call the sustained discounts. Uh, we do per minute billing, so if you need to bring your, a massive workload to process something and shut them down, and that takes five minutes, you get five minutes cost, not an hour or whatever big chunk, which is the cycle that uh, you can see uh, elsewhere. And, and, and where are we going with all of this, right? So we are, we are bringing mo a lot of the services we have internally uh, to, to, to you to be able to use. And we are, as the, this technology goes along, we are actually building more and more uh, infrastructure and also services that gives on top of that. So that brings me to this slide. So where, where every icon is either a platform or a technology or a product, you don't have to know them all, obviously. The main important thing here to, to, to remember is for almost for each section of your problem, uh, Google is trying to come up with a sustainable, reliable, fast, uh, and uh, something you can trust and you can depend on, right? So uh, in those three main um, verses right now, but there are products that cut across them, right? So there are uh, products that will be at the same time for application and analytics. And that gets back to, uh, Another ask that we have is we have to be open source friendly. We have to embrace the open source community exactly for the locking. Like locking becomes a major problem 
in the wall garden, how some people say, where after you, you, you basically marry yourself to a vendor, you can never leave, right? And, and you want to be able to have the flexibility to move if you feel like. Uh, I'd be willing to bet that you're not leaving, but not because I trapped you, just because the system works exactly how you want, as fast as you want, and with the price you want. So, um, one thing that is uh, the issue with all of those cloud offerings is um, how to integrate them into your existing systems. And uh, given the existing situation that you have already infrastructure running, um, uh, there are many of those products that uh, now you want to fit into your existing systems, your existing workflows, and your existing pipelines. Um, and up until now, um, we from Puppet tried our best to um, offer you modules that help you with the most important tasks that you were uh, encountering in the cloud. Uh, but now with we, over the next, uh, in, in the foreseeable future, um, with vendors like Google coming online uh, who put their own engineering resources on this, uh, who have a much better knowledge of the problem space they're working in. Um, this is uh, one thing where we can um, really uh, multiply the, the value that is provided by Puppet just by leveraging um, the vendors of those products. Um, another issue is fragmentation. Um, currently, we have some parts of uh, the products covered, but again, um, some of them are in different programming styles. Uh, some are just best efforts by the open source community, which cover the most important parts, but maybe not all of the products. Um, and finally, uh, going uh, into the more complex application areas where we have security um, and compliance issues, uh, we need to cover uh, things like uh, permission models, single, uh, multiple projects in the same, uh, in the same sphere of influence, uh, and also uh, the, the first set of modules uh, only covered a model where we had credentials that had all the rights. And again, um, this is something that um, Nelson and his team are now trying to address with uh, their modules. Yeah, and, and taking my Google hat for a second, put my Puppet Administrator hat, more than once, that a new technology comes along and my user comes and says, okay, I need to use that new thing because it will solve my problem. The, and now, how do I integrate? So we either have to cut them loose to script away and now start putting that information somewhere else, or if, if force them to learn everything about Puppet and in many cases give them access to your master infrastructure or something, uh, or say, well, uh, you have to wait. So all those scenarios are, are, are we consider bad. So, so like bad for the customer, for, for, the, for the operation. And even after uh, some technology goes along, let's say Google just released machine learning so we can actually train uh, um, on recognition or let's say image patterns. If your user wants to use that today, the community didn't have time to catch up if there is not this coordination that we are now building with, with Puppet in a sense that by the time I want to release the, the machine learning, to the world, I want to be able to puppet users to actually use them from day one. And even when somebody like, like the, let's say, the heroes in the community come and say, okay, I will help you build that, if they are trying to solve their own problem, because they also have probably a daytime job somewhere else, and they are using puppet there, they are likely not going to cover the whole thing, right? So in that case, the solutions, which happened to me many times, is I get a module, uh, that is not like super established and doesn't work for me. I either have to go rewrite the module or not use the module at all, or, or spend a lot of time trying to make that module work for me, right? So this becomes something that we, we simply want to get rid of. And the way we are doing that is we are going to provide you the modules to manage the, the, the cloud APIs, or the cloud uh, platform in general. <coughs> And as we are doing that, I say, okay, so not just give you like a bunch of modules, but I also want to advance in the way you actually operate some of those. So we are creating this baseline that all modules operate upon, like a, a, a set of premises. 
that makes like, if you learn one module, you likely know them all, like how they all operate, how they behave, how they look, how things are shared between them. We're gonna see in the demo, we are going to bring a demo line with all of these actually working, and I will go through the code that does that. And I'm, a most important thing is there is no overlap, like the modules will be dedicated to do that thing that they think well, in a reported fashion, of course, so if you run again, it will not disrupt your infrastructure, so all correct, and bring the infrastructure up to date if you ask to ensure a new value over there. So, so what are we doing, right? So we've been for, for quite some time with a, a large team building this whole infrastructure uh, for Puppet. So soon, we'll be releasing uh, approximately, last time I counted, 22 new modules to Puppet Forge. And that will cover 21 products plus the common module that stitch some of them together. Uh, and we cover uh, most of those blue hexagons you saw before. Uh, and we are building internally a pipeline to, as new products come along, they will be tapped into this pipeline and our goal is by the time a beta comes along of a product, you should be able to have a working version of, of uh, a module that you can actually, from day one, let's say, Google Launch Technology X, cool. Puppet install Google Dash X. All right, so Puppet Model install is all I need, should be there. If not, we are trying to close the gap as close as we can for that to happen. And we'll cover everything that the product X does, whatever X is, right? So that's why we, as last time I count, we added 102 new providers to Puppet and 102 new types. So we can manage every single detail. So I want to get to the detail as, if I want to change the number of replicas of my instance group in my project for that credential, I should be able to do that with Puppet. I, have, I want to go very, very deep into the, the, the configuration. So I never, although I love that UI, I never have to touch that. I Puppet apply something, I Puppet agent something, and that's all I need. I can go there to verify like we're going to do through the demo, but just so I can feel good looking at all that. Like, I don't need to go there. I know that Puppet says, catalog applied, we're done. We can go home, like they said in the, in the, in the keynote, right? Yeah, and I'm very excited to uh, be here now with Nelson um, and seeing all of that uh, being developed and released, uh, it will work on uh, your existing Puppet installations, it will work on uh, the future Puppet Enterprise installations. Um, of course, since it's only talking to an API, um, all the uh, usual operating systems are supported as a, um, as a runtime base to, to manage those, those resources. Yeah, and one critical thing uh, to, to, to point out also is we are making the Google Cloud look as Puppet resources. Is, uh, we are not simply writing a, a, a wrapper library to the API, because if an object in the cloud doesn't behave like a, a Puppet resource, we're actually rewriting and uh, we write a new type and new provider to make it so. So an example I can give you is a DNS, which is a transactional, where you, you don't say your IP address is a specific number. You have to actually create a transaction behind to make that happen. In this module, you look like a, a, a resource. I can say, ensure my IP address is 10123. And behind the scenes, everything, many APIs will get called, not just one, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping. Many things will happen in the back to make sure that what you ask do happen. So yeah. you don't have to worry about what APIs, what put up, no, you just read it. Like the, the normal local puppet install, you look, oh, how package works. Okay, so that's how I install something in the Google Cloud as well. Yeah, and finally, um, also one very important thing about this project is uh, this is not just Google building it on the green field for themselves, but actually we're uh, also in there uh, helping out with uh, consulting on code quality and um, the details on how Puppet works so that both of us can bring in the particular areas of expertise, uh, which will uh, result in all of those modules being approved, uh, meeting our quality standards so that you can uh, trust them and they work as expected and integrate in all the other uh, tools from Puppet that you know and, and like. You don't need to read that, it's intentionally small, but basically this is a glimpse of the number of new types we are adding, right? So covering a vast number of projects. Again, that's the last time I count, they grew a little bit after that. Uh, but they will be obviously each one, each module. That's just a joke slide, I'm not going to spend time here. Good luck, yeah, that. So, uh, I think the best start to me saying how these all work magically or, or, or good, we should actually see this working in, in real life, right? So, 
uh, well, before, maybe I should let me launch the demo because it takes around uh, 10 minutes to run, to, to create the whole infrastructure and set up the application itself. So I will go through what's happening uh, because just looking at Puppet spill out uh, uh, resources being created, we can go back and check, but I want to give an overview of what's happening because there is a lot of uh, behind the scenes things happening here. And what I'm going to do is the, my new deployer here, I'm going to tag everything with this number. So let's see. Um, well, you uh, not uh, already in this system here. Can you give me a number? 118. Uh, greater than 300. What? Greater than 200. 300. Okay. So this is because for this demo, everything I will build in the Google Cloud will have 318 on it, so we can actually have that. But to make sure we, we're not colluding, we should first go back here and check there is nothing as 318 here. Oh, come on, this was fast, too fast. I'm erasing this thing. Okay, now at least it's created. So what's happening is, uh, as I just ran it. I should have come here before running this. So uh, things are happening here, um, and I'll go to explain what they are. We can also see the data creation that was not created before. So yeah, there we go, no 318 here. Okay, so all those tabs up above are pieces we are going to actually be touching. Uh, so let's go back to that. So um, what the demo consists of is uh, deploying a Magento Web Store uh, application to GCP. Um, here you can see uh, all the parts that are uh, part of that Web Store solution. Uh, over there you can see we need a DNS server and a CDN uh, to um, serve some of the static parts. In the, cent in the center you see the Web Store itself that drives all the application logic. Uh, we have web services for order management. Of course there is a MySQL database um, with a batch scheduler that does inventory management um, and uh, receives data from the field. Uh, we have an analysis components component for the business and monitoring and alert uh, tracking on, at, on the top so that we uh, can realize if something is going wrong in the application itself. Um, with GCP, um, all of those components uh, can be replaced by uh, Google Cloud Services. Um, a few years ago, um, the term, term was coined that with Puppet, the scaling of your organizational capacities uh, change from the number of hosts you're managing uh, to the number of services you're managing. And um, one thing that is really fascinating for me here is um, that now we are at the next step where actually the number of services you're managing is not anymore <coughs> like DNS, CDN, uh, the load balancer we added here for the GCP version of the deployment, um, the MySQL server, and so on. But the service that we're managing here now is the Magento Web Store, and we don't need a DNS expert and a CDN expert. Um, those are, like it was mentioned this morning, those are the uh, gritty details that we can now hide behind an abstraction that is managed by Google for us, um, and we can um, concentrate on the most important parts of that, like what is it that we want to sell, how, how can we set up the integrations of the Magento Web Store uh, with our uh, order management so that uh, we have a good flow with our partners in, in the business. Yeah, so, and also because so, so, some of those I can understand, like say DNS, somebody can say, oh, I, I can also today man, have my managed DNS by one of the big registrar, let's say uh, GoDaddy or Network Solutions. But if you don't go to that UI and pack around, automating that and like use like Puppet, I can say ensure my DNS is running has that specific configuration is a big deal, right? So yes, you can go and sign up for a service. And I heard more than once, and, and sometimes recently, that setting up the DNS correctly and ensure they're always correct as you move your infrastructure is actually a big deal. So, and what, when that goes wrong, your user cannot use their application because they're pointing to the wrong DNS. And, that, and the, because the guy was changing everything in his data center, and he forgot to go back to the NetSol console and change the IP address over there, because in many cases, this cannot be tightly integrated. 
So again, another slide uh, uh, that's very dense, but I'm gonna dig it, but I want to put everything in a single picture to explain what's going on to the scene. So the, the, the gray ones, I don't need to read, I will have a bigger version, are all the modules and types and providers we are actually using in this demo. And the, and the blue ones are the services we are integrating. So there is a lot of communications between the services and the, pro the providers, and between the providers themselves. So that's something new uh, we are trying to do here, which is, in many cases, you have to communicate between two pieces. We're gonna get into that because that's an interesting problem. So this is how our Magento solution will look from the Google standpoint, right? So you have a, a, I decided to put Magento in a VM. I could have decided to put in a, in, in a container engine with lots of containers, that should be the same. Uh, we have a loading balancer that will route to one or more versions of my Magento to make sure they are uh, uh, always up. We set up on the fly a DNS and, and hook it to the loading balancer. And, and the connections between them are the dependencies, right? So uh, I also want to be able to log everything that's happened on my environment. I think that's an important point. Uh, Puppet has a lot of infrastructure for you to figure out what's going on, right? But that's required Puppet to be there. And like they said, uh, like uh, 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 the CEO said on the keynote, if you have something that is running sub-second and something goes wrong, how do you know what went wrong? And if your Puppet, for example, failed to install because your network firewall was incorrect and you could not reach the RPM file, Puppet will not be able to help you to figure out what's going on. So we have, we will also hook this solution to my login service so I can actually see even pre-puppet what's going on. Because even installation of the puppet I can actually control and manage to make sure I can get that going, right? So we're going to go to, through that. Actually, how about you do a quick detour and go there and look at that. So this is basically my logs viewer. This gives me a Google style search, but a kind of a structure search for everything I have in, in the uh, Google uh, project I have. Come on, network. Come on, network. Time for Time for the hotspot. Oh, oh. oh, Nelson, it's. Yeah, I'm still having the hotspot here just in case. Shouldn't take that long, so I'll blame the network and I'll reload on the hotspot. Yeah, because everything is running in the cloud, you just need to be able to draw a page, right? So I don't need you to transfer large resources. Okay. So now, uh, it was 318, right, our number. So I can go here, my computer engine, and say, let's see everything that's happening on machine 318. So there's 318 here. And I can say, let's say, for example, let's try. maybe my machine is not created yet. So maybe I should work here. No, is this created? Good. So it should be here shortly. I'll go back, get back here. So I guess, okay, there you go. So right now, I'm, I'm actually going to install Puppet uh, on the fly. This is a blank machine. So you can try to build your own machine and, and create e images, but in my case, I would just always create from, start from, from scratch. So I have here my, my installation going. And like I said, I, can, I mean, just focus on this machine, but I can look on every machine I ever created and I just do a search style uh, on all my logs in real time, right? So as you can see here. And if I'm not satisfied, I can just click this and the logs will be streamed to this screen as they go. So I can just stay here and things will just keep happening as, the, as they go. Okay, so things are going well. I just want to make sure things were going well. Puppet is already running there. So in this example, what, uh, what will happen is like this. <coughs> so we are going to have a loading balancer, right? So the loading balancer needs an IP address, obviously, or more than one. But why am I creating a static IP first? Because I want to connect the pieces together. I want to create a VM and say, VM, when you set up this web service, your actual URL is not your, your IP address, it's somewhere else. So I need to hand this IP address to the VM 
so the VM can actually set itself up correctly. At the same time, when I create a, 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 a SQL instance, not a database, create a database is easy, you go create a database full. Now, I'm creating a, a host that you have the database eventually at the same time. So the, the one that was spinning before was actually the, 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 the host that you eventually hosted the MySQL that eventually have your own database inside. But when I created that instance, I want to lock that instance down to that machine I'm just creating again. Because I don't want to create opening the web and then once I know the IP of the VM, go and lock it down. I want to lock it down from the ground up. So I need to be able to fetch data between the providers, and between the types in Puppet, so I can actually do that. Because in my code, I will have a block to say, create a DNS, and I have a block to say allocate a static IP address, but I need to get that IP address and tell the DNS to update. And if you go look how, I got disconnected because of the hotspot, sorry, let me just reconnect here. So this is just a sample of how you look in, the, in this environment, right? So eventually I have to put my IP address over there. But that's all I need to, if I want to create a DNS environment in this, in this new world. So I just define, hey, I, I have a zone, that is my .com site, and I have an IP address, and the auto require, so I don't have to put a require there, and then this will, this will actually happen. Uh, of course, the solution we're deploying is and by the way, you're going to release the code for this solution as well. So I, I'm flickering here, but you, you'll be able to get all this. But basically, eventually here, I have uh, everything dis defined. And in many cases, like, like here, like to point to the DNS, you have over there, uh, actually, here, the IP address I don't know yet. So I have to go fetch that IP address from the, from the platform. So I can actually put over here so Puppet can actually do the right thing, right? So, so this is something that is very common, is, is, a, is very different between the local environment, right? Uh, and once the Puppet gets installed, in the, in the machine, we have another module, a set of modules that runs in the machine itself, like in this case that you set up logging, that sets up in the machine. All the others set up outside the machine. So I, you create an IP in the platform, but if you want to hook the logging uh, in, uh, from the machine to the logging agent outside, so I, like I, do, I can do what I did, which stream all the logs out, right? So, so, so and, and this is happening um, uh, probably almost now, by now. So, so the, the trick is, was really that. So uh, how do I feel that? I, 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 when I create a VM, a VM gets a random IP address, a, a, a dynamic IP address. That's a problem. And I say, okay, so it's easy. I can just allocate a static IP address. And I already gave you means to allocate static IP address, just like that. But that's the problem not solved. You, you still don't know what the IP address is. It will be static, yes, after you run. Until you run, you don't have it. So how do we, are you going to tell, fill the, the, the question mark, say, okay, once you allocate the IP address, please put the IP address over there so Puppet can actually go and do the next level, right? So that's where we are also providing uh, functional libraries and other providers to allow you to query the API and get the, the resource that you, you care about, in this case, the IP address, so I can actually provide a, a, a call and now I can fill, and that's exactly how the demo is running right now. So I can say, allocate the address, now please tell me what the static IP address is that you just allocated, and I will give that IP address to the SQL user so the user can only be accessed from the machine I just created. So like I said, I don't, I don't like machines running or services running open, so security has to be touched from the ground up. So all of this deals with that. Yeah, and another thing that is um, relatively new in this uh, cloud management area is that um, prior to uh, these API-based resources, uh, all the local node management was happening on a machine, and the assumptions were that, is, that Puppet is running as a privileged agent, either a system in Windows or a root on Linux, um, that all the re resources are local and are easy to access and uh, quick to enumerate, which in uh, the API management world here 
uh, with uh, Google and the other cloud providers we have, um, it's uh, completely different. The, lo the resources are not local anymore. Um, enumeration is expensive because there are potentially uh, thousands or millions of hosts out there um, hosted uh, in, in a cloud project. Um, and the agent is constrained and requires uh, access credentials to this API, um, potentially even uh, divided by project uh, or uh, as, as the Google project here will show, uh, using very fine grained uh, credentials for read only or read write access for uh, particular resources. Yeah, and just one parallel with the local puppets, right? So you can say, oh, it, I can always do enumerate all my applications, install all my services, right? So I can, I can have a fact that I upload them all to the master so the master can look at them. But the, the, the cloud is more like your file type. You cannot have a list of all your files and send them to the master so the master say, do you have, uh, like, pierce through them and find if you have files start with the letter A. That's too expensive to do in any file system, Windows or, or Linux, because the number of files will be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, depending on how big your system is. So you can think of cloud as everything's like a file, all resources like a file. Some resources are small, of course you don't have 10,000 DNS addresses, uh, uh, DNS zones, sure. But when you talk about files in the, in the storage or VMs or other smaller resources, they will be in the billions, like rows in a database or, or in a big table. They can be really big, right? And you cannot easily enumerate them, but it's too expensive. So. Okay, so, so let's see if our demo finished. And to do that, I'm going to rely again on my logging guy here. And I see here that my bootstrap ran, the startup script ran, so I, I will assume it is done. So let's see, where is my loading balancer? Let's refresh this guy. So now I have a load and balance to configure with a health check because I also want to make sure if your machine goes down, uh, the platform can detect and not send traffic to a bad machine. So this was all configured. Uh, and you can see all the 318s spread around. So you can see down here, uh, health check 318 uh, here. Uh, that was also created as part of this run. And now let's see if I can access my app. Hopefully I can. As it's still running. So what you have, as part of this demo, after the, the, the Puppet agent started running, Magento, the app we were doing, sets itself up. It takes around five to seven minutes, depending on the connectivity to that. Oh, there we go. So that, that's uh, our app store all set up. I can start making purchases here and, and, and sending money to whoever is actually running the store. And we can see, it's probably small over there, the, the IP address 205 belongs to, see for to who that belongs. So here, uh, in the highlighted there. Belongs to the front end, which is the loading balancer, right? So I have a loading balancer now set that you, in this case, I just set up one instance of my service, but if I want to set up three, I can just say instance equals three in my manager group, and then now I have three images. If one image dies, the platform will bring another image for you, and you have a central database uh, configured. Like I said, the, the important thing here is I just did not create a database because that's easy. I may actually create the platform that hosts the database. I can decide which zone it is, if it's in the, if, if I need a, a database in Europe separate because of uh, uh, user uh, data locale, I can use this and decide where it goes. It would be just one more parameter in, in, the, in the Puppet manifest to specify where they want to go, right? And if you have more than one, you can always do, use the 40 to loop and get all of them. So we talked a little bit about this common platform, right, that we're trying to make throughout the modules. One that is very important uh, is secret management, credential management in general and um, create stronger boundaries. And the first thing we found was, depending on whose model you're using, the, the whole system behaves different. Some, some, somebody may require a file in your home folder with your key, some, somebody will require something in a registry in a Windows machine. 
So we decided to organize that in what we are calling uh, GOF credential, which uh, as a puppet type has its own backend provider, uh, with its, its own dedicated module. But every module we will ship going forward, we understand this. So I can define one credential in one place and manage any object in the Google Cloud Platform. Like it's a, and, and, and uh, as you can see here on the top right, when I create a VM, an instance, a VM instance, I can say use the credential, their name. And that name is actually uh, how you define, and you can have more than one too. So you may want to have different credentials for different things. I'm, for example, in this project, I'm an administrator, I can do anything. Uh, and I can accidentally destroy stuff. So now I can have different accounts for different purposes. And I can give it those smaller granted accounts to Puppet and say, when you're deploying, please deploy using this credential. This credential can only create VMs. He cannot touch my DNS. So not that, uh, of course, uh, um, to get your hands on this credential, you have to have access to begin with. So I'm not uh, at this moment uh, uh, concerned against an external attacker, but just bugs that I myself can do, put in, or somebody else accidentally uh, uh, touch something. Because uh, normally, if you're an admin, you, you own everything. And that's become very problematic if you're, if you're lo even looking at a production environment. Right? I want to be able to browse the production environment without being able to destroy anything. And when I apply something like this, I actually go and, and everything works. Right? So, uh, and, and also, this is the, the multi-credential is important if you have separation of concerns. Let's say if you have a CI system that produces builds. You, you can give your developers an account that only have read only to that. And that account can be shared if you want or not. Again, I'm not saying you should use multi-credential. Multi I'm just saying now you can. If you decide to cut very thin your, your, your layer because you think it will be more safe, in, 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 this, in this sense, you can. If you want to use a single account for everything, you also can. Like, uh, we are not dictating how you use. I'm saying that you can use it in any model you want. Right? Uh, I prefer separating them so I, I don't accidentally uh, step over myself. Like I'm saying, uh, yeah. what's the, the quote again you said before? Uh, protecting? Yeah, protecting future me of, of from past me. Yes. So, so because after three months, I don't remember anymore why I was doing some of those things, right? And the same thing about still in the security ar arena, we are talking about multi project. So, it's very common because of it's very hard today. Everything lives on a single project. And that brings a lot of problems with that. Problems in the sense that, well, I'm admin on that project. I own everything, I can destroy everything, first and foremost, that. But also quotas are, 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 are shared, billing is single, which in this case can be not ideal. So if I have a, 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 a team or a, one of my acquisitions running a service, I may want to have different billing for them, different isolation, but not like because I had me restricted myself temporarily. No, I cannot even touch them, or I can only read them, and can, there is nothing I can possibly do myself to actually step my boundaries. So again, now you have the option to, and, and this is also common throughout any of these modules. You can, every object, you can specify which project that module will actually affect. So in this simple example, all of them were targeting a single project, but I could have said my DNS goes to that project, these VMs go here, the database goes somewhere else, and it still works the same way. If it, and, and I can even start small. I can point all of them to the same. And when I grow, time to split. For me, it's as simple as I go here and change the name of the project to somewhere else and then apply again. So this is also future-proof in the sense that you can start small, and as your application and your services grow, you can move them around without having to rewrite everything. Or, or, or oh, and by the way, this whole demo was, was all run with no execs. There was no exec uh, uh, blocks in that. It was all pure puppet. So, so all the dependence, everything was all puppets. There was no, oh, there's a little shell script here that does that little thing. No, no, it's not allowed. We said, that was not, now first rule, if I'm doing exact anything, I'm probably missing the point. So this whole demo, setting up this whole infrastructure was done with no execs to set up the infrastructure. Right, so, 
Uh, also, we want to in, in, in encourage and invite you to actually try the Google Cloud. Uh, as of now, we cannot try that code I, I, I showed you, but soon. But if you actually write down that link, you can actually get a $500 credit to uh, start with Google Cloud. Uh, we will uh, probably tweet this later to the public of channel, uh, but uh, you, you feel free to try. Uh, I'll give it. Everybody took the picture. So, what's next, right? So, we, we, we are working very hard to uh, both Puppet and Google to finalize this work and get to your hands as soon as you can. Uh, and I will ask you to watch out for the usual suspects where you find news about this technology, which is Puppet blog and Cloud Platform blog. And as soon as we have this ready for consumption, we will announce there. We can obviously monitor the, the Google Puppet Forge, which now is empty right now, so there are nothing there. And soon we'll be hopefully filled with approved projects. But we are going through all the, the, all the hoops necessary to make sure you get the highest quality. So, so we are building, working with, with uh, Daniel's team to make sure that it's all approved and pass all the tests, runs all those platforms. And um, as soon as we can, that's uh, our, our, our promise, we, we get you all of this. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nelson. Um, I think we do have time for one question, probably, or maybe two, if you. Right, so for the VI inveterados, uh, there is no exec in their code. I mean, this is basically the organization. It worked. Uh, you said that you will release this particular piece of code to you know, make it available. What will be the mechanics? How we can get it? So the idea is every, mo every, every, every piece of this will be a separate dedicated Puppet module. So it'll be as easy as you go Puppet module install Google Dash G Compute. And now you have all access to Google Compute Platform. Or Google Dash D G DNS, you get all the DNS services. Yeah, yeah, and and so I'm saying that this particular piece, you said this demo, at least that was my understanding. Oh, the demo itself will be another, another module you will produce that you, you have all this so we can actually use as a, a frame of reference, like how I set this up. They are kind of standard for the, 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 the puppet point of view, where I use requires and simple things like that. But it's nice to have something that you can run, right? You can just like tweak You can use the, it as a scaffolding, basically, to build your own things eventually. Mm -hmm. So I'm new to all this puppet stuff. I'm here to learn. And so this might be a dumb question. But can, you, you have this set up to be all Google. Can you also do a mix and match? Let's say, for instance, I really like where I have my MySQL implemented. I don't want to put that in the cloud yet. Can you do a mix and match using this technology as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, that's one of the um, main advantages of Puppet, that Puppet itself doesn't care about where or what your infrastructure is looking like. Um, you want your MySQL managed yourself, or you need a special uh, clustering implementation, or anything like that. Um, it's completely fine. You will manage that as you did before, and just pass the information that you need to access that MySQL onto the Google Cloud resources, and it will um, just work. Yes. Yeah, uh, this demo I went all Google Cloud to show how complicated connections can be made. But I could have just used one of them if I needed, like so just, just the VM and nothing else. But it's up to you to define or decide how much of that you can do. It was just like a dramatic effect of puppetize everything, which is actually the name of the talk. Uh, but it was you can scale down as much as you need. I think we're out of time, actually. We have right. 20 seconds. Yeah. We'll, we'll be around for the whole conference, yeah. so just uh, catch us on the, on the whole way and we can figure it out for you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.